Is your main story withering on the vine? It's time for a story seed. Learn how to grow your own awesome adventures tonight. That's how we roll. 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 Welcome to the Goblin's Corner. My name is Eric. And I'm Matt. And tonight, we're discussing story seeds. That's right. We're going to talk about story seeds a little bit and show you how you can make amazing side quests, come up with awesome characters, and use the concept of story seeds to further grow your adventure. We're also going to use a lot of horticulture references as well. Yeah, we're, we're probably going to run with this pun a little bit. So we're going to throw a lot of fertilizer into this show. Fair play. Yeah, you like that, huh? Yeah, this is going to be a fun episode. I totally agree. We're also going to talk about some best practices that you can use story seeds with, as well as six campaign story seeds for you to use that we've come up with on the fly. As a lot of the things we come up with Out of our made. brains. Yep. Just like that. Story seeds in a D&D game can be an excellent way to introduce new plots or characters, settings. It helps keep the campaign fresh and engaging. And you want to be fresh. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, and you want to be engaging. You don't want to be a funky DM. Don't be a funky DM. Don't be boring. We're going to show you how to not be boring. First off, what's a story seed, Matt? Because you may not know what that is. Simply put, story seeds are starting points or ideas which can generate a story. Yes, generate. You know you wanted to say germinate. I've 100%. I told you we're going to use the gardening references as often as possible tonight. Most of the time, folks, they are very simple, at least in the beginning, and they usually have only two things. Two things. One of them is a problem, right? Or a challenge. And then the possible solution to that problem or challenge. That's it. Yeah. That's a story seed. Idea, solution. There you go. There's the episode. Congratulations. Good night. <laughs> there you go. There's a lich. It needs murdering. Ta-da! Yeah. Well, that lich always needs killing, right? There's a slot. He needs a party hat. And a mallet. And a mallet. There's a beholder shark. You know what he needs? He just needs to blast things and swim along. Chum. <laughs> he needs chum. He needs a chum. Yeah. Yeah, chummer. That's it. Everything else that you would insert into the story seed develops along the way. Now let's talk about actually developing the story seed. Sure. How do we use a story seed in a campaign, Matt? You provide them as gifts for your players, and sometimes your players provide them as gifts to you. 100%. In improv, we used to call this gift giving, and what you would do is you would give this gift an idea and see how the rest of your cast would respond to it, right? So similar to this, you give an idea, a gift to your players, and see how they respond to this stimulus. Absolutely. Yeah. It's inspiration to take the story into new paths or new directions. That's right. Remember, it's not just you making this story. Don't be the railroad guy. You Please. may want to conduct that train, but there's passengers riding along, and they're also writing the story with you. It is a collaborative game. This is something that helps you maintain flexibility in a campaign. Absolutely. Because you can drop out a couple of these, and whichever ones people most enjoy the idea of are the ones that they'll follow. Story seeds allow you to adapt to all sorts of changes presented by your consequence of actions. And if you don't know about consequence of actions, we've got like a million episodes on consequence of actions. We talk about this a lot. Your players will do something. You throw some ideas out. They'll respond to those ideas, and you'll either have a side quest or a new main quest. Yes. And you know what? It can be used for characters, too. Speaking of characters... It's a great way for your characters to have a chance to grow. Story seeds let you give them ideas they can take to further grow their characters. The best gift you can give to someone is a character growth arc. They've got an idea... They want to maybe have a dramatic rise or a dramatic fall. Sure. Something good, right? Like that paladin, he's got to fall to evil for brief time before he's redeemed. That's always an option. Also, it's a, a way for you to plant seeds for character goals. Oh, like what? Like if that paladin wants to join a knighthood. Well, now you can plant the seeds of, oh, well, if you're going to become a knight, you're required to meet at least three requirements. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a perfect example. In addition to that, story seeds will spice things up when the story gets dull, particularly the main story. You've got this overriding main quest. 
And you know what? It's awesome. And your characters love it. But sometimes it wears you down. I say this all the time. When the tension is always high, it stops being tension. Mm -hmm. You have to have points where you break off and change the volume, change the tone at least enough for when you get back to a main point, it starts to feel important again. Absolutely. And this is where story seeds particularly shine because they will build that tension. They will foreshadow those elements into your game. They're also great for story arcs or like individual chapters. This paired with the consequence of actions for your players with their previous goals, their previous actions and so forth, that really makes excellent storytelling. And one of the things we we did mention a bit earlier is that potentially it can change the entire direction of a game. Yeah. I mean, this isn't one track. You can bounce all over the place. I mean, we're talking off-road stories here. It goes, it can go deep into the woods. Yeah, story seeds excel in an open sandbox style game, where you just throw out half a dozen of them and see where things go. I would say that's the best course of action: splatter it across the wall, see what sticks, pick and choose like a buffet table. Right, take what you want and leave the rest. These are just again, these are ideas, and if they're not acted upon. Cool. Save them for later. Save them for the next game, right? Absolutely. So we have our idea of what a story seed is. We know how to use them in our game, you know, to spice things up, to add extra character elements and so forth. Now let's talk a little bit about the best practices for story seeds because that's important. Yes. The first thing you really need to consider when you're developing story seeds is your campaign's theme. Theme is always important in a game session. Because one of the things we discuss is in session zero, it is up to the group to decide what type of game you're playing. So your story seeds should reflect that. You've got to align with like the overarching themes and tones of the campaign. Yeah. And you don't have to. It can, You could totally go 180 and do something you know, now for something completely different. Sure. But in general, if you're having a nautical game, for example, say with pirates, yeah, because who doesn't love a pirate campaign, then your story seeds might be pirate related or island related, or at least, I don't know, nautical related. But occasionally you might go to an airship. I, well, I was going to say you might wash <laughs> up on the shores of like Northern Africa, where it goes from literally from ocean to desert. Oh, that's a good point. You're in the Sahara now. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. The trick is, is to have a narrative that makes sense and then keeps the players engaged. For example, if you've got a dark and gritty campaign, you should have at least mostly dark and gritty character seeds. Because you're trying to run a dark and gritty story. Right. If you're doing chthonic horror, guess what? You're going to be in the underworld doing some chthonic horror things. Imagine that. You might be trying to escape the underworld. That might be one of the story seeds. That's certainly a good story seed is to escape the place that you went to go do whatever the, the MacGuffin is. Sure. This is also a great chance to tie in character backstories. Oh, yeah. Do not neglect your player's backstories because they've spent all that time making the player backstory. So give them that opportunity. And if they didn't spend all that time making their character backstories, here's my thing. If you tell me you have two brothers, you were raised on a farm, and that's your backstory, mm -hmm. those brothers are not safe. <laughs> no. They will be killed at some point. And not even necessarily danger. killed, but they will be put into danger. They've both become paladins and drowned in the swamp. The less you flesh it out, the more open room you've left me with. Yeah, so what we're saying is, is that tailor your story seeds to what your players are doing and how they're playing. And what they're playing, too. Yeah. And focus on character relationships, themes, and as we mentioned before, what, what are their goals? Yeah. Relationships are the easy thing to do. It really is that simple. If you just think about the relationships between your party members yeah. and between the NPCs and the characters, then you could pretty much come up with any idea that works within your setting. And it seems very simple. And it seems kind of silly, and it is very silly and very simple. It's that simple. Yeah, it really is. That's what good story is, right? Most importantly, and as we mentioned before, make the story seeds 
interesting to people. For some players, this is going to be easier than for others. For some players, if you put a big red button there, they're going to push it. That's just the type of people they are. What we hear down south like to call is doom fishing. Doom fishing. You can do something that is definitely certain death, and your character is going to go doom fishing. They're going to buy it. Absolutely. It's a big old worm on a hook. They're going to buy it. Right? They yep. will. Oh, you see a pedestal in the middle of a hallway. The pedestal is brightly colored. There is no dust anywhere around the pedestal, but the rest of the hallway is filthy. You know, it's got like the dust of ages around it and stuff. Think of like the, uh, the idol from Indiana Jones. Sure. There's, I don't know, a jewel or something on there. Clearly magical. It's glowing. Right. right? Yeah. Maybe it's floating or hovering in midair. What, what is the first thing that's going to happen, Matt? They're going to walk into that gelatinous cube? Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that would be my first trap, yes. But they're going to want to touch it. Oh, yeah. They're gonna, if there's a well, sign. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to cast detect magic. They're going to see it's magical. Uh-huh. And then they're going to want to touch. And then they're going to want to touch it. If there is some sort of, I don't know, runes that they can translate that definitely says it's dangerous, they will most certainly touch it. It's a big red button. That's called no, doom fishing. Yeah. No matter <laughs> how you paint it, right? It's still just a big red button. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Have them push that big red button. Be ready to adapt your story seats. Your stories will change on a moment's notice. Why? First off, because you have players. And they will squirrel out. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to surprise you. Yeah. We squirrel out all the time anyway. And can you imagine? Even as DMs. Even as DMs. Even in the show. Yes. Here's a fun DM trick. All right. When you write down your story seed, write out a few of the directions your story seed might take. This can be like a mind map. This can be an if-then statement. You can just draw stuff. If you're... One of those people truly dedicated to the art of organization, make a flow chart. Yeah, whatever, whatever you happen to do, this just keeps you from struggling so that you don't get blindsided by your players. And you will be blindsided at some point in your DM career by your players. You're just going to. Yeah, it's going it's to happen. Also, this is a great chance to bring up the fact you are an improv comedian and... Improv classes are, even if you just take a few of them, they are great for being a DM. Yeah, because you can yes and stuff. I yes and all the time. Yeah, it gives you a framework to recognize sometimes what's going on at your table, to recognize that maybe your player is intentionally trying to hand you something. Because if you're not thinking in that method, then you're going to miss those cues comes down to listening and reacting and there's yeah. a lot of different things yeah i i recommend improv to anybody who dms or just anybody in general it's just a good skill to have in life yeah it's like learning to draw everybody should have a little bit of drawing skill right everyone should know a little bit about everything, everything. <laughs> you can use story seeds as starting points they're yeah. not set in stone what do we mean by like not set in stone the whole purpose here for us is to not railroad our players to a set location using a set path. And this is a really good example when you're doing something like maybe using a module or maybe you've written an adventure and you know how you get, you get the tunnel vision, you focused on the main story, but you haven't thought of every single thing. And your characters might focus on something particular, I don't know, a weird door description or something like that. And they're focused on this for like an hour. And you're like, dude, just get past the door. No, this is a gift. Yes, 100. That's what I was just about <laughs> to say. If, if my players, there's something in the description, there's some flavor somewhere that they just immediately turn all their attention on, this is now a thing. Uh -huh. Whatever this thing is, it's something and we're going to work it out together. This can be NPCs. This can be anything. It can be an object, whatever it is, right? It's meant to inspire the players, and it's also not about, you know, dictating a particular course of action. If they're focused on this weird-ass door, make the weird-ass door. Make yeah. it weird. It's important. Make it weird. Yep. Make it real weird. Make it open up into some skewed geometry. Make it open up where there's, like, I don't know, some rogue modrons that are, it's a room and they're counting money. Give it an animated doorknob. Yeah. That's it's my method. An an <laughs> it's about this big, but it's damn impressive. Hit you with the lightning bolt. Yep. The goal here is to spark creativity in your players and yourself. 
Yeah. That's what it's for. And we laugh about this stuff. And obviously we're making jokes, but you know what? Some of the best jokes that you're just goofing around with your friends become the best story seeds yes. every time. The big note about all of this is, though, is don't force it. Let the players decide the direction these story seeds are going to take. Again, we're fishing here, right? Whether it's doom fishing or just fishing for you know stories in general. Use these seeds to have fun and introduce fun into your game. Don't be, if, if you're a group of players and, you know, people who've known each other for a long time, don't be afraid to drop a little Easter egg in there as a story seed occasionally. Like if you've got inside jokes or whatever, absolutely just put a little something, a little drop in the water and see what happens or make it a literal Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. Look, I make the joke about the paladin drowning in a swamp all the time on the show, right? You don't think I've had a drowned paladin in my game at some point? I've seen it on the map. <laughs> <laughs> Eric has literally created a map that has a drowned paladin as one of the images on the map. Yeah, it's got a little description where he got well, how he drowned. Yep. It's just it's it's a running joke that we have, right? Additionally, we've got a bunch of other running jokes. There's usually a door golem at some point. Sure. That acts like a, you know, surfer stoner. For some reason, there's always some small race of lizard men. Mm hmm. There's always a slod with a party hat. I don't know why he has a party hat and a mallet. I, that generated with you. That was just something that sprung out of your skull. It's fully in my formed. mind's eye. Yeah. They always have the it's party hat. It's your hats. Athena. It's party time, man. Deep in limbo, Hamblish the Paisley Mage. He only ventured a certain depth, but the further you get, the more it's just party hats the whole way down. Nothing but party hats, the paper ones. Sure. From, that you get from, you know, Party City? Yeah. The cheap-ass ones? Yeah. They're, they're Paisley party hats. The Paisley party hats. The elastic doesn't last very long, but that's okay. They just stick them on. They staple them to their heads. That's how I see it. Yep. Speaking of squirreling out, we're going to move on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, something of note. All right. You may have amazing ideas now about your story seeds. Great. Don't go overboard. Sprinkle them in. Yes. They're meant to inspire creativity. They're meant for a little bit of garnish, right? Not to be the entire story. You will end up with analysis paralysis if you provide your players with a dozen options from the outset. Yes. Too little story seeds, you're going to have a dull campaign. We've talked about this, but too many. And as you mentioned, they're not going to know what to do. Yeah. They're going to be overloaded with choices. As a pro tip here, these seeds don't need to all lead to something powerful. You can start them off normal and build up from there. A friend of mine once said, if you want monkeys on the moon, you got to start on the ground. Point we're trying to make, though, is, is that you want to have just innocuous events sometimes. It doesn't have to be this all-powerful MacGuffin. It could literally just be this particular bush happens to be neon. That's pretty interesting. Right. That could start an entire story seed. Why is it neon? Well, because it, you know, there's maybe, I don't know, a magic object buried below the bush. Sure. Cool. Now you've got a side quest to find out what, what's up with this, you know, item. Yep. Does it, is it going to be an artifact? No. It's a bush that is the subject of a continual light spell. Like there's just a continual light buried under it. Oh, and the bush just absorbed the continual light? Yeah. How delightful is that? That's a nice little flavor point to your game. Maybe you're in it. This would be perfect for a grim dark setting because everything's just gritty. And now for something completely different, right? Right. You've just got a little spot of brightness. A random neon shrub. You know that dwarf's gonna take his axe and cut that. Gotta bush know. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta know. He's gonna he's gonna set it on top of his head. He's gonna mount it to his uh, his horned helmet. He'll look like a little gnome with a with with a bright bush. Sure. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Finally, let your players nurture or wither the story seeds. They'll decide how important any given seed is and whether or not or how much they want to follow through with it. And if you let them nurture or wither the seeds, you will look incredible as a storyteller, period. If you say something and you know your players caught it and kept walking, never bring it up again. Mm-hmm. Just because they didn't care. <laughs> it wasn't that they didn't catch it. If you know they caught it, walk away from it. You could even do the whole once, maybe slightly twice, if you think it's important enough. Right. But after that, yeah, just give it up, right? 
throw another idea out. Eventually something's going to catch. They're going to focus on it. They're going to write that into their own story in your game. And they're going to be like, wow, this is a really great story. You're doing such a good job. You didn't do anything. You just passed some ideas out. Yeah. And then let them do the you work. You helped them write the story. Right. That's why we play role-playing games. Otherwise, it's called writing a book. Yes. <laughs> Guess what I like to do? I like to, I like to play stories with other people. Right. I'm not against writing a book, but that's a lot more work. In fact. Speaking of things that maybe aren't so much work, we've got what, Matt? It's time for the question of the week. All right. Hit me. What do we have for this week, Matt? Okay. This is very on theme. As we mentioned, occasionally, even the best campaign can start, the energy can start to wane a little bit. What are a couple of the ways that you as a DM, like to drop a story seed in the lap of your players. My favorite way, this is my favorite way. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, I know the answer to this question, but I wanted to ask. Is a ridiculous character. It's always the ridiculous character. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be the rogue Modron that maybe has a few gears missing, mm -hmm. and people just fixate on that. It could be the, the plucky goblin from the chicken tribe. Sure. That worships chickens. Yeah. It could be the British Admiral talking, flying carpet riding gnome that happens to have a tea set on command. Because there's always time for always tea. Always time for tea. Yes. That's my favorite way. Another uh, idea is some sort of unusual environment, some kind of bizarre, strange environment description. Those are generally the two that I enjoy the most. I agree with you on, on number one. Mm -hmm. a, a unusual NPC interaction is always fun. Always leads to a fun story because they want to know more about that character. Why is this character so weird? Or why is this character doing something? Or why is it getting... What's their story? Yeah, what's the story? What's up with this guy? The other thing I like is, in, in the vein of an environment, but more specifically, a strange, unexpected object interaction. So perhaps something like, I don't know, a mobile chair that just wandered onto the road. Sure. Or... Walking through a gravestone, and one of the gravestones turns to follow you. That's kind of cool. Probably going to want to know what's up with that. Yeah, I really like that idea because that's a great story seed in and of itself. For example, we'll go back to the headstone that just kind of turns as you... Is it enchanted? Is it a product because maybe there's a ghost possessing it? Or maybe it's just weird. Yep. Like Maybe it's just, just something that you can't explain. And Could be the entrance to a mini dungeon. That would be fun, or some kind of strange portal. Yeah. All kinds of things. Could be a monster. It could, in fact. Could be a mimic. It's a mimic. Could be a mimic. I also like the idea that it's actually uh, a gravestone golem. I'm down with that as well. Why not? Yeah, why not? Of course, we're always interested in your answers to the question of the week, and if you have one, hit us up at Goblin's Corner on all the various socials. And if you're one of the 40% who haven't subscribed yet, why not? You can subscribe now, comment down below. After all, that's where the comment section's for. That's true. So we're talking about story seeds, and because we're wonderful people, we have given you six story seeds this evening that, again, these are just a taste of some of the ways that you can interject story seeds. These uh, fall on what I would consider to be fairly common themes. Sure. And Matt, why don't you start us off with the lost artifact? This is a, a very common story seed. Very. Uh, in this case, we're going to have a village elder that hires the party to retrieve a family heirloom stolen by bandits. But along the way, they discovered that the bandits were hired by a rival village that are seeking to unlock the artifact's hidden power. Ooh, that's a great side quest right there. Don't, do you need anything else aside from that? No. No. You don't even need to know what the artifact does. And as importantly, as we stated before, not everything has to be high-powered. It could be that the rival faction incorrectly believes that the heirloom is an artifact. Or it could just have emotional importance to yep. both of the rival villages. You know, maybe it's, I don't know, a sacred soccer ball that they've used in some great game or a trophy. Or the two village elders are brothers and it's literally just a family heirloom. Something their mom gave them. Yeah. That would be amazing, right? The characters are literally cutting people down, fighting monsters. They're using, you know, epic level magic. They finally return the heirloom to one of the village elders. They're like, thank you. My father gave this to me. What is it? Ah, it's a, it's a pipe. Spoon. 
It's a pipe. Yeah. <laughs> pipe, it's a soup spoon, something like that. Right. Be great. Tell me about the siege. Once again, another easy story seed. So the siege is when visiting a town or keep, players find it under siege by a mysterious army. Doesn't have to be mysterious, by the way. It could just be you show could be up. a very obvious army. You could be going out doing a, uh, you know, right after you've raided the dungeon, you do, you know, you sell everything in the nearest town. Along the way, it gets sieged by an army. Could be any army, right? Yep. Mysterious is fun, though. Yeah. The party is asked to help break the siege, uncover the identity of the attacking force, or find out why they're targeting the town. <laughs> sure. Why the hell is there an army outside my village? Yeah. Who knows? Especially if it's a village, right? Mm-hmm. Who sends an army to a, a village? Or a keep. Yeah. Maybe it's just like a, what is it, like a small keep that's in the mountains, and there's a big-ass army. Are they moving through? Who knows? Is it an army of monsters, undead, or just a bunch of dumbass humans? All of the above. All of the above. Let's talk about our third delightful story seed, and this one we call The Betrayal. A renowned knight or paladin or nobleman or... Somebody. Yeah. A renowned somebody is accused of treason and imprisoned. Ooh. The party is hired to prove the character's innocence, leading them to uncover a deeper conspiracy within the kingdom's court. This is a really simple one as well. This could be the court jester. This could be someone just affiliated with some sort of hierarchy. It doesn't have to be kingdoms, by the way. It could be a guild merchant. Sure. It could be a... Any organization. Any organization. You know what would be great? It's if you've got a party of mages, you're running a mage campaign, it's one of the mages from your local mage guild. Or whoever is your high ups in your game a church somebody in power Ooh, churches would be great too yeah especially if it's a good church where like betrayal is a big deal because if it's an evil church uh, okay so he it's betrayed expected yeah. hey he, it's tuesday yeah he just betrayed me well i guess he's getting promoted right <laughs> yeah this is a fun one because this could either this could go many ways you could either have the players do a little hack and slash if they're hack and slashy could have to do some intrigue if they're very intrigued, maybe diplomats their way through, or you could just have them do a jailbreak. Yeah. There's a lot of ways this can go. We discovered he's innocent. They still don't want to let him go. Well, too bad. Yeah. Too, yeah. <laughs> he's coming with us. All right. Kid gloves are off. It's time for the adventurers to come into town. Yep. Tell me about the prophecy. All right. This is a fun one as well. While in the market, an oracle delivers a prophecy that a cataclysm will soon befall the realm. See where this is going. If the party investigates further, they are sent to obtain something, ancient relics, a spell, or what have you, that will prevent the prophecy from coming true. But rival factions also seek these MacGuffins for their own purposes. That's an easy story, Seed. Yep. This can, by the way, be a main story at some point, too, if it becomes powerful enough. Yeah. But it could just be... A literal, I've delivered this prophecy of doom. Well, what is the doom? I don't know. The well's poisoned. The prophecy of doom can be scaled to the point that you want it to be scaled to. Mm -hmm. I've mentioned before, I have an NPC that is a little kid who throws tantrums occasionally. And if you actually pay attention, he's an oracle. So that's a fun story to see as well. We've got two more, and this one I particularly like. It's called The Arcane Storm. Any D&D book you've ever read has something similar to this. What's The Arcane Storm? It is, an unnatural storm has settled over a coastal region. It disrupts trade and dangers lives, and the party has to find the source of the storm and stop it. Maybe they uncover a vengeful sea spirit or a rogue elemental or whatever's causing the storm. Yeah, it's a magical battle. There's a kraken that's really pissed off. Sure. There's anything. Literally anything. Anything. Yeah, a majestic sea tyrant. If you've watched our Aquatic Atrocities episode. That's going to need to be a higher level campaign, <laughs> but sure. As a final note, we've got another very classic story seed here. The Sleeping Monster. That's right. A dragon or whatever monster has been magically put to sleep to protect the region. However, a group of cultists plans to awaken it to gain power or what have you, right? It's going to get its favor, you know, figure out some kind of reason for that. It's a great place for a megafauna. Great place for a megafauna. The party must thwart the cultist's plans before the creature awakens and wrecks havoc upon the realms. There you go. It could be any monster. Yeah. It could be any type of cultist. 
and any level. That's what I was going to say. If you're starting off very low level, it could be a low level monster that happens to just be a threat for this tiny area. Mm-hmm. Right? Like it would absolutely not be a threat to a kingdom. The kingdom would smash it. But this village is dust by the time that happens. There's a dormant ant keg nest. Yeah. And it's just frozen under the glacier. And these cultists are going to warm it up. And if you don't know what an ant keg is, a big ass bug. Sure. That digs. And it's going to destroy all the crops. It's yep. going to destroy the whole town. Because it's going to dig up everything, eat all the cows. Yeah. You know? They, make, they're make very off. dangerous to very low level people. Yeah. And, or it could be, as we mentioned, a sleeping dragon, which also is very dangerous <laughs> to a town. Digging up things and burning people alive. Mountain lion megafauna. Mountain lion megafauna. The entire damn mountain is a mountain lion. Yep. We talked about that in our megafauna episode as well. So a lot of different reasons for that. And again, these are just six examples. There are plenty more and you can do literally anything that you can come up with that you think your players will bite on. Pull them out of your brain and you will enjoy your game. Yep. So there you have it. Some ways to interject story seeds into your campaign, as well as some examples for you to use and hopefully to inspire you and your players to tell better stories. Yeah, it's just a little creative fertilizer. For yeah. yeah, water them as you see fit. Any questions or comments, hit us up at Goblin's Corner on all the various socials. Did you enjoy this podcast? We're growing a few more. Subscribe to it on your favorite player, YouTube and Twitch. And remember, click the five stars and give us a review on iTunes, Podchaser, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the like and subscribe button. It helps get our show in front of more people, and it feeds the hungry algorithm. Which is currently burrowing forth into your bread, invading your lungs, and turning you into a zombie. It's growing. Yeah, I mean, and that is very much what the algorithm is theoretically for. It's the last of us. It's what the algorithm is. Yes. That's all the time we have for this week. Once again, my name is Eric. And I'm Matt. We'll see you next time. Good night, folks. In a world where the Goblin's Corner is by Matt Staples and Eric Holden, show song by the mighty D20. This has been a subterranean production coming soon.